So here's the problem. Years ago, life insurance professionals would receive in-depth sales training, not only showing different life insurance products and how they work, but the advanced planning concepts that bring in the five, six, and seven figure commission checks. Fast forward to today, and those types of training programs are almost non-existent. To solve the problem of inefficient marketing efforts and advisors stumbling around trying to understand how to do business in the advanced markets, Trained Advisor leads the way in showing top level producers how to acquire, identify, present, and close advanced life insurance cases. Welcome to the weekly 10 minute concept training with Trained Advisor. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on our weekly concept call today. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about how you can help your clients effectively manage their risk and potentially create a profit center uh, with the risk that they have inherently in their business. As we look at all the tools that we have, one of the things that we always want to make sure is that all of these tools coordinate together for our client. And when we look at the risk management side of our, our client's business, this is another tool, the captive insurance model is a tool that should coordinate with everything else that they're doing. So really the question comes, what is a captive? A captive is a private insurance company structured to provide insurance or reinsurance to its related entities. And so you have to understand this is a licensed insurance company, a property and casualty company. And if you look at how our clients, you know, have to manage the risk in their business, you know, because every business owner knows there's risk to, to operating that business. Well, the first thing they can do is they can avoid the risk altogether. They can discontinue the activity or, or discontinue operating that business. That's, that's an option. The other one is they can transfer that risk. What, what that involves is they can go out and buy insurance from, a, from an insurance company and transfer that risk from, from them as a business owner to the insurance company. Finally, and this happens with a lot of hard to, to understand risk or hard to identify risk, they can do nothing. They can just say that's a cost of doing business, hope it doesn't happen, but they've retained that risk as, as part of their business model. And finally, the strategy I wanna to talk to you about today is setting up a captive insurance company or a captive reinsurance company, quantify that risk and, and take care of that risk through the captive insurance model. So if you look at it, Congress has set up a tax incentive for clients to uh, set up their captive insurance company under 831B of the Internal Revenue Code. A, a business owner can deduct up to $2.3 million this year for 2018, and this is going to be increased with the cost of living. And so that is a deduction just like any other insurance premium would be. What's nice under 831B is when the client sets up the captive insurance company, that premium is not treated as income to the captive, and the captive is only taxed on the investment profits and in the income that's going to be generated from the investment profits of that business. So why would the IRS give us that kind of a tax break? The obvious answer is they want to help businesses build up reserves to make sure those businesses can handle the downturns in their business, not only to protect the business, but protect jobs, protect the employees of that business so that they can weather the storms that come up. So let's take a look at how a captive works. If you look at first, every business has risk. And part of the, the process of, of looking at this risk is we need to, I, number one, identify the risk and classify that risk. And I say we classify it into really two different categories. The first side here on the left are probably those risks that are higher probability risks that are easier to identify. And finally, 
are risks that we can go out and buy commercial policies on the open market, and that is uh, cost effective for our clients. The risks on the right side typically are lower probability risks or risks that are harder to quantify or harder to identify. Those are the types of risks that either the client's going to continue to hold and, and hope they don't happen, or they can set up their captive insurance company to handle those types of risks. So if we look at it, what's going to happen is the actuaries are going to help identify those risks. The actuary is going to account for the amount of premium that the operating business can can transfer uh, from the from the business to the insurance company and the owner of the business gets a tax deduction for that for that premium that's paid now that premium is going to be the lower of 2.3 million dollars which is the IRS's maximum or the amount that the actuary has determined is the maximum premium. So the lower of those two amounts is the amount that we can take for the tax deduction this year for the business. Now, we always know there's more behind the scenes. And the insurance company now can, by contract, transfer their risk from the insurance company to the reinsurance company. And in this case, the owner of the operating business is also going to be the owner of the reinsurance company. So now they have created a company that is going to contractually cover some of the risks uh, for both the insurance company and ultimately back to the operating business. So what happens is if there's a loss in the operating business that's covered by these policies that have been written by the insurance company, that loss is going to be covered by the insurance and company and the reinsurance company. And <clears throat> this creates a nice way for our business owner to really account for the potential losses that could be generated in their business. And so what we don't what we hope happens is that there's not a loss, that things go go well, these losses don't occur. And so we don't have to re have money traveling back from the reinsurance company back into our operating business. So you now look at it and say, if there's no claims, now what? Well, the captive reinsurance company is at that point, since it's no longer subject to any policy exposure, it's just like any other C corporation. Number one is they can provide loans to the owners of the business or any other you know, business or, or individual out there, these loans, if they're related party loans, we have to meet the IRS minimums applicable federal rates. The captive reinsurance company could liquidate or distribute money at capital gains rates. And finally, they can invest in life insurance, land, property, whatever else, just like any normal C corporation can. And so what this creates is if there aren't any claims back in the operating company, the client now has created a profit center on a tax advantage basis. They got an, they've got a, an ordinary deduction when they move the premium into the company, and they're either going to take the money out as loans and eventually as capital gains rates when they liquidate the company at whatever time the life expectancy of that captive reinsurance company is. And so, if you look at this, for our clients, this really is a great way for a profitable business to account for the risk in their business, receive a tax deduction for covering those risks, and in the end, create a profit center that can benefit them to grow their business down the road or branch out into other opportunities. I appreciate everybody getting on. Next week, we're going to expand on this concept and also look at premium financing, really focus on how our clients can use other people's money to pay for their life insurance premiums. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, reach out to me with any questions. I appreciate you getting on and look forward to talking to you next week.